Hey YouTube, this is Son of Liberty, and this afternoon I'm coming to you guys to um, uh, rediscuss uh, with you guys again my uh, the items that I keep in my bug out bag. Um, I had done some videos before on this uh, or on this particular kit. However, uh, since then I have uh, uh, changed to a different type of bag. Um, I've taken some items out. I've added some items to it, uh, and so I wanted to, to have this opportunity to sit down and um, you know go through my bag again. Um, uh, also, too, to discuss with you the contents inside of the medical kit that I keep with me uh, inside this bag. Um, if, if you're new um, to actually, um, you know, well, wanting to build your own kit, the first thing that I would tell anybody, if anybody came to me for advice, would be to consider the absolute worst day of weather that you can remember and start from there. Uh, this particular kit is set up for winter right now. Last week we had a uh, wind chill factor in the negatives. So with uh, temperatures into the negative teens, um, you know, it, it was, it was pretty brutal. So um, those are the types of days that go through my mind when I want to sit down and I want to build, um, you know, a particular kit. So, uh, you know, this is the results uh, of those thoughts. Um, and you know, there is a lot more stuff probably on this bag or in this bag that you're going to see uh, versus some of the other kits that are out online right now. Um, you're probably going to see a lot more streamlined, a lot more military bags. Uh, I like the particular setup of the hiker uh, packs. Um, this one part particularly has an external frame, uh, which helps which helps uh, in uh, the distribution of the weight um, across your body. So. Uh, that is a big deal to me and I have to have that because of my back. About two and a half years ago I had a really uh, bad injury to my back and I never could figure out why I never got better um, and it was because I have a very advanced case of degenerative disc disease. So with that being said I really have to watch uh, the weight of a kit. Now this particular bag is not going to be that heavy in the summertime. I'll be able to downgrade a lot of stuff, even the tent, uh, and go with a much much simpler setup. Um, however, with as brutal as the winter has been this year, I want to have the items that I need to increase my chances of survival. Um, so, uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get started with this bag. Turn this around. Um, on the top of this external frame, it's got a really good handle, uh, which makes, uh, makes it a lot easier to actually don this pack and put it on. Um, a lot of the other benefits of this particular style of, of pack um, is... Uh, that it's got a mesh lining for your lower lumbar support. Not only is it a support system, it also acts as a ventilation system so that that way it helps reduce the amount of sweat on your back. Um, any of your hikers out there that know if you've ever had a particular back that, or pack, excuse me, that lays on your back as you're hiking, uh, you know, after a few minutes or even, uh, you know, an hour into your trip, your entire back is soaked. Um, and especially in wintertime, that's not what you want. Um, it's got a really good um, uh, waist strap. Um, it's really thick. It's got a lot of padding, uh, and so it really works well for me. Um, it's got really thick padding uh, on the straps, um, and you know I didn't actually mention this is actually outdoor products. A lot of you guys may uh, recognize this brand from Walmart. Uh, they do sell a lot of products inside of Walmart. Um, I've never seen one uh, like this sold at a Walmart. I actually picked this up at a military shop. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to start at the uh, top outer compartment and then I'll work my way to the inside uh, last. Alright, first items, hand warmers. Um, they're absolutely a must, uh, you know, especially if you're trying to keep yourself a little extra warm. Um, you can put these in specific locations on your body. Um, uh, you know, I will go ahead and mention those if... Um, if you're trying to warm your core body temperature up, um, and let's say you're only relying on the items such, such as the sleep bag that you may have, uh, but you happen to have some hand warmers, there's some other items that you can use to do this, uh, but we're just gonna take these for example. You wanna place them um, on your neck, um, in your armpit, um, or actually uh, along the femoral uh, between your legs. Um, and what that does is that helps warm the, the blood flow as it travels through your body um, and it will actually help give you a, a warmer core temperature. But just be careful because the, one of the things that you want to avoid is you don't want to be sweating at night, uh, especially in a very, very cold or extreme cold environment. 
Um, I always keep these two maps uh, with me. Uh, one is just all the major interstates um, in Tennessee, uh, and the other one is just my local area, um, which is a topographical map. Um, and these are actually waterproof. Uh, National Geographic makes these, um, so you don't have to worry about them getting ruined. Um, and, and they've got a lot of different uh, points of interest um, on here, so these are always great. You know, a lot of people, um, you know, forget and they overlook these types of things, but also, too, maybe it's a localized uh, event in your specific area and you need to leave. Maybe it's a massive chemical spill. Uh, you know, I live downwind from one particular nuclear plant um, and not far from another one that actually makes nuclear fuel. Um, so, you know, if there was a catastrophic event and we'll take an earthquake for example and you needed to leave the immediate area your major intersections and highways are all more than likely going to be congested or probably at a standstill so it's going to be good to have a map of your local area so that you can you can take back roads um, to get as far away as you can so keep those in there um, I've actually got an orange safety vest um, and I actually keep this in here because um, if it's a um, you know, a, a top, maybe it's a, a tornado that has come through the local area. I just happened to be, you know, on foot. I took shelter someplace, um, you know, but I want to be seen or I want to be spotted. Um, you know, this is a good thing that I can actually just drape over my bag. Uh, I can either put on my persons um, to increase the visibility of myself, uh, you know, if I need to be rescued. Um, these are actually two batteries. Um, that I picked up and they, they're just in plastic uh, containers and I've just left them in there. They're 123 batteries uh, and I keep extra um, batteries for my Surefire. This is the Outdoorsman um, and it's actually got two different settings. It's got a low and then it's got a bright. Um, and I like this uh, light and I've had it for many, many years. Um, and the way that the clip is designed, I can also wear it um, on the front of my hat um, if this particular light happens to go down on me. Um, I'm a big, um, uh, I will always support hands-free, um, so you need some way to be able to light your way uh, and be hands-free. Um, you may have to draw your sidearm if you're carrying a sidearm. Um, you may have to cross a, a very tricky area on a trail. Uh, you may have to climb across uh, debris. Uh, you may have to help somebody out, possibly. Uh, maybe you've got another person with you. So, uh, with that being said, you need the ability to be able to be hands-free. Uh, this is an actual uh, Petzl light. Um, it's actually just got one setting on it, and it's just enough brightness. Uh, but what I really liked about this thing is it doesn't matter if... Maybe, for example, I'm wearing it, but uh, let's say my son's with me. He's got a smaller head than I do. So um, this is completely adjustable. We don't have to do anything to adjust any straps. All you do is pull, um, and this thing adjusts to whatever size, the size that you need it to be. Um, so anyway, that's a, a great little object, or a great little, that's a great little light. One of the items people forget to carry in their bags is a compass. Um, I didn't pay a whole lot of money for this um, compass. But it's a really good one. Uh, I like the style. It's uh, it's got a mirror inside. Um, <clears throat> um, also, too, this is a, this is really great. And I'll mention this uh, point real quick. Uh, let's say you're at the at the top of a ridge or a peak. Okay, maybe you're at the highest point, and you've got a specific location marked uh, down below in the valley that you're going because you know the general direction that you need to go. And let's say you're you're traveling north. Um, when you get down to that pre-designated area, maybe it's a, a stream that you've picked out that you want to get to. Um, if you you can actually use this mirror to keep the location that you're coming from over your shoulder, so that that will also help keep you um, on on track. Um, and there's still a lot that I need to learn about uh, navigation, but uh, a lot of this is a process and in, in learning. Um, I'm previous military, but we didn't get a lot of navigation. Um, uh, training with the unit that I was with so um, with that being said um, you know I have to take it upon myself to be able to learn those skills all right so let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna start on uh, this side here first I don't keep a whole lot of items in that uh, compartment uh, but what I do keep is a uh, hundred feet of paracord that I've uh, that I've manually wrapped so that way it takes up less space inside my bag um, also, I've got a uh, just a Condor pistol magazine that I keep my utility multi-tool in. Um, this is a old Gerber. Uh, this has been around for a long time. I've had this thing for years. 
Um, also keep a small, you guys, uh, SIG, uh, SIG fans will recognize this. This is a little pack of uh, gun oil that comes with uh, most SIGs that you buy. I happen to pull this out of a, a box uh, that I had and um, <clears throat> I'll keep this with me just in case I need to put a little oil on my gun uh, or one of my other items that needs uh, that lubrication. Uh, because especially if it's really wet conditions, you don't want those items failing on you. So this little item here, and I can't take credit for this ideal. I actually was um, uh, roaming around YouTube and actually found another person uh, who was using this idea. And so I went to Walmart today. This is an actual pit, uh, pencil bag, um, you know, that you pick up for your kids for school. Um, and it was marked down at Walmart for $2. Uh, and so it, it was a great idea. I had a lot of loose items in one of my, uh, uh, this particular uh, side over here, or actually, I'm sorry, over here. And, um, you know, I hated when I would want something specific. I would open it up, have to dig through it. Everything's contained in this one bag. So let me go ahead and open this up. It's actually broken into two different sides. Um, so let's actually start with this side here. I've got a flare. You can pick these up at Walmart. They come in two in a pack. Um, they're like 488 for two, I believe, um, and this is just a signal flare. Um, you know, in the event, uh, you know, you can never have enough options to start a fire. Um, absolutely, hands down, if there's anything that should be redundant in your bag, in my opinion, should be fire options. Uh, and water, you know, of course, fire is an option for water purification. So, um, anyway, I've got this flare. Inside of here, I've got magnesium shavings. Uh, which is great and this is actually a um, just a penny vial or a, uh, a dime vial to keep coins in um, and that's what that uh, container is for also got a big lighter um, yeah, I've got a piece of duct tape on it just to prevent it uh, if it hits something else uh, to make sure that it doesn't leak um, also too I can use that duct tape for something else if I need to put a patch on my tent uh, or a pair of pants um, so you know that's always good to have Inside of here, I've just got a piece of plastic bag that's uh, just been taped down with more duct tape, um, but it's actually a trioxane bar. And I've got this in here just in case it was to get crushed, uh, the bag was to tear. Um, I didn't want for, if by chance, if my bag was to get wet, I did not want this, uh, the, the chemicals inside of this to seep in uh, into my water filter because I've got a water filter on the other side. I'll share with that uh, with you guys in just a second. So got that in here now inside this grizzly can <clears throat> I don't dip it's nasty habit but uh, it's all plastic uh, and the reason I want a plastic is to protect the contents inside and inside is I've got some jute rope um, and some other items some shavings just to help um, increase my chances of starting a fire at least I'll have some dry tinder no matter where I go and no matter how wet the elements are I'll be able to have some dry tinder. So this is a, a good good thing to keep in your kit. On the other side, this is my uh, Frontier Pro water filter. Um, I can't say enough things about it. Let me actually get it out of the bag here. Right in rain pad, more duct tape, Sharpie marker. Uh, so that way I can take notes, leave messages. That's always uh, seems to be a big hit on everybody's uh, uh, bug out bag videos anyway this is the frontier pro uh, this thing is absolutely phenomenal um, you can usually find them for about twenty dollars maybe even cheaper if you search around maybe amazon um, and the reason that i like this particular one there's a lot of different ones um, i don't have a katadyne i'd like to have one uh, but for the option this thing will actually filter up to 50 gallons of water however I called the manufacturer's research and development uh, department and spoke to those uh, guys who actually put this thing through its trials. And what they were sharing with me is that, of course, the cleaner the water, you could actually push this thing up to 100 gallons. For $20 up to 100 gallons of water, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost near priceless. Um, one of the things, though, that they did mention, however, and, and this is most common sense for most people, the dirtier the water the less the gallons that it's going to be able to uh, filter. However, they do guarantee it up to 50 gallons. Um, it does have these interchangeable cotton filters that you can replace here. You just simply unscrew this piece. The cotton filter is replaced here. 
Now, here's the here's the cool thing about this. It's very versatile. Um, you've actually got your bite valve here, okay? And I'll post some links um, in the web addresses um, at the end of this video, or at least in the description. Um, I'm still working. I don't know if a hyperlink will actually work uh, in the video, but we'll try it. Um, the benefit to this, there is a rubber piece that comes off, and what this does is this gives me the ability. If uh, if you actually are an advocate of carrying a Camelback, this is one of the biggest benefits to this kit. Your Camelback's bite valve removes by pressing this button here. This piece right here just simply inserts in and clicks. Now I can fill up this water uh, bladder from a stream, um, a lake if I have to, and I can just drink and it's going to filter for me on the move. Now, let's say for example, I don't have a, let's say you're not an advocate of carrying these, and let's say you don't have one, but you carry bottles. Well, so if you don't have one, get a Dasani bottle. Um, you'd be surprised, especially if you, if you live near lakes, um, how many you can find of these or, you know, Mountain Dew bottles, Pepsi bottles just washed up on shore. You can use it, any of these bottles by simply unscrewing this piece here. And it's got a nipple on the inside. You insert the straw here. That one's a little tight on that end. You just simply insert the straw there. Fill your bottle up. Drop it in. Screw that on there just like that. You can drink from it. Um, you know, or if you've got a larger, maybe a one liter bottle that you carry, um, use it, you know, you can use it with that. It'll fit pretty much almost um, all um, standard bottle openings. So, so again, this is my Frontier Pro uh, water filtration system. There's what the front of the package looks like. Um, again, you can pick this up for $19.99, $25 uh, at, at maybe your uh, favorite military store. Um, it's definitely good to have. I, I, have. Um, I actually keep one in every one of my bags. So anyway, okay, so um, in the other compartment, the only thing I really keep is my cookware system, which is actually by Coleman Max. Uh, this is actually the top lid. This folds out, okay, to form a handle. You could cook an egg inside of here. Uh, you could use it for soup, um, you know, whatever. Um, I've got some insides of an MRE to kind of keep that from uh, clanging around. It's also got some sugar, some instant coffee if I needed a little extra energy uh, that I keep. And then the main compartment here um, is for boiling water. Now, what's really great about this, and I'm going to show you, hopefully you can see the inside. There's the actual imprint. Um, it's actually got measurements, and one of the, the great things about that is, is if you think about it, um, if you're really conserving water, uh, or if you're having to use water to cook with, um, maybe you're, you don't live near a water source, um, you really need to make sure that you're measuring your water to make sure that you're not uh, wasting any of it, um, as precious as a life source as it is. Uh, this is my actual, um, uh, it's actually a jet boil canister. Uh, but this is actually what fuels the um, my Burton stove. Uh, the Burton stove just essentially screws into the top of this, um, and uh, I've used it several times. Um, I've got a different one that I use now that I like a lot better, uh, but I use it quite often. So anyway, so let's go ahead and let's get inside this bag and look at the contents that I've got. All right, guys, one of the uh, points that I want to mention that I do, it's probably a little bit different uh, than most other people do. Um, I've got an orange waterproof uh, bag up here at top, and uh, inside of this is my medical kit. The reason that I've got it attached at the very top of my uh, system is because I want quick access to this. Um, if I need this kit and I need to work on myself, if I need to work on a loved one, um, if I need to work on you know, you know a stranger, I want to be able to have access to be able to get this uh, this kit as quickly as possible. So, 
Anyway, the reason I've got this in a, uh, a waterproof uh, bag, dry bag, is because I've had to learn the hard way. Um, one of the cons of carrying a, um, a bladder system in your bag, if you don't have it protected from the other items, um, especially when it's hot, it is going to uh, it's going to sweat and it's going to sweat a lot, especially three liters of water. Um, and I can't tell you how many medical items that I've had ruined because the sweat has soaked through and absorbed into the actual medical kit itself. Uh, it's ruined numerous chest seals. Um, you know, uh, other items that really needed to be sterile. Um, and so I've just had to throw those items away and just purchase more. So um, that's the reason why I started doing this. And also, too, you know, this is something that you could possibly have to use to save a life or sustain a life. You don't want to run the chances of this getting wet. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, items that I keep inside of here. So I'm sure that I'm going to get a few questions on what type of uh, medical bag this is. It is a tactical tailor medical bag. On the back, I don't actually have EMT shears, but rather I picked up um, some scissors, um, fishing scissors uh, from Walmart. Um, and these actually work great for the purpose that I need them for. Uh, I've actually cut blue jeans through, um, even through the seams, just to make sure that they would before I, I carried them with this, and they done fine. So. I just needed an extra pair and I didn't have them, so that's what I decided to use. First item we come to is a bottle of uh, potassium iodide tablets. Again, I mentioned uh, I live uh, close to a couple um, nuclear facilities, so that's kind of important for me to have in my med kit. Again, your med kit should be built for you, same as your bag should be. Um, it should be tailored to your needs. You may have specific medical needs that I don't and vice versa. So um, e each medical kit will vary um, just like uh, uh, bags will. So this thing is actually broken up into two sections and I'll just go ahead and start in the top and work my way down. Um, pretty much, um, and, and just to explain even though I'm starting here and going here, all of my immediate uh, first need or the very first thing that I need for a trauma is all in the very front of these two pouches. So I do have these set up specifically, but again, we're going to start here and work our way down. Uh, first item that we come to is Quick Clock. Uh, this bag here, <clears throat> I've got um, some Cellox, um, some different variety of Band-Aids, antiseptic wipes, things of that nature. Uh, if you'll watch my other video on my IFAC, uh, I go into a little bit more detail of why you shouldn't use Cellox for larger wounds, especially the granular, um, unless you have absolutely no other, no other option. Um, in this little bag, uh, I've got some hemostats, um, some antibiotics, or actually a specific type of antibiotic. Um, the liquid Imodium AD, which is... Uh, which will absorb into your body faster versus the pill form. Um, so if you're going to carry this stuff, I would at least advise you to get the, the, the better stuff and get the liquid because it does absorb faster. Um, and then I've got some, some other medicine um, in here. I also have a suturing kit. Uh, that's what the hemostats are for. Here I've got a ACE bandage, a self-adhering ACE bandage. Um, this is what I would use to either wrap a wound once it's uh, uh, once it's been taken care of or a compressed bandage uh, but also too a lot of people don't know that um, after a, uh, a sprain if you'll immediately put an ace bandage uh, around the sprain uh, whether it be your wrist or the um, the ankle it will actually uh, help or can help reduce the uh, amount of swelling uh, that your uh, that the injured area sustains um, two ounce bottle of betadine for cleaning wounds. This stuff is great because it'll kill just about anything. I also have an additional uh, emergency uh, blanket. This is great for, you know, if I just needed to keep warm at night. Uh, again, this bag is being prepared for winter. I want to keep mentioning that. Um, so, uh, but again, if I'm treating also somebody else and they're going into shock from a wound or maybe they're going into hypothermic shock, this thing right here will come in handy. We've got a couple uh, little packets of Tylenol. Keep those in there. Get headaches from time to time. Uh, here's some H&H &H compressed gauze. 
as well as an instant cold compress. I also have an allergic reaction to bees, so I've got to keep an EpiPen with me. And then I've got some Neosporin on the go. So that pretty much takes care of this first pocket down below. First thing we come to is a nasal, nasal, nasal pharyngeal tube. Okay, make sure to keep the airways um, open. Um, this will pretty much come in most IFACs if you buy the military types from eBay. Um, you know, this is simply an, an Israeli bandage, uh, which are actually really great. It's even got instructions on one side on how to properly use it. Cat tourniquet. I've got a uh, decompression needle, 14 gauge. Here I've got uh, Vaseline petroleum soaked gauze, and this is actually good for treating burns. In the back I've got some, um, uh, I don't know, probably four or five, um, four by four gauze pads. Another roll of gauze. Um, if the if the wound is substantial enough and it actually was to soak through uh, the H and H gauze, I would just unroll this and just continue to keep packing it. Um, but you know, most wounds you can uh, generally get stopped with uh, compression, but that's not always the case. It, the reality is is that a lot of people think, well, just because they keep this in their kit, that that's going to solve all their problems, and that's not the case. Um, if the wound is bad enough, you may have to use two or three of these, um, you know, before the blood was to actually stop or uh, coagulate enough. There's a lot of other factors to keep in mind. Maybe the person that you're working on is on an aspirin regimen, which makes them uh, bleed even more profusely. Um, and this is just some actual uh, lubrication for the nasal pharyngeal tube. So that just pretty much covers the uh, my medical kit. And... Uh, I'll get all this stuff packed back up and we'll get back to the bag. All right, guys, one thing that I want to mention that I, I overlooked when I was uh, going over my medical bag was that I don't have a chest seal in there. Um, I do, however, have an extensive medical bag or a trauma kit uh, in my truck uh, that does have a chest seal. I just didn't have an extra one to be able to put in that kit. So uh, it's one little thing that I wanted to cover before I go on. Um, one thing that's very important, especially in cold conditions or wet conditions, is to be able to stay dry. Um, now, one thing that I was able to come across was a, uh, a multi-cam military Gore-Tex rain suit. Um, this is the shells. Uh, they're very lightweight. Um, before I actually came across these, I was using the um, frog togs uh, that you can pick up at Dick's Sporting Goods, uh, and they actually do work really good. Um, however, after long periods of exposure to uh, weather, uh, you know, you'll start to see some areas uh, that will come through, especially on the, at the seams. Um, you know, they're just not made uh, to, to this type of uh, expectations. Of course, these are military grade, um, so always keep those. Um, I'm not really going to go over my uh, sleeping bag. It's a 30 degree mountain hardware sleeping bag. Um, However, one thing that I do want to mention is something that's overlooked at least most of the kits that I see. Um, nobody has a way to keep their bags dry. Uh, a lot of these military bags, whether it be from, you know, uh, 511, Condor, uh, whoever, whoever makes it, um, those bags aren't waterproof. Now, you can buy a waterproofing spray. However, the stuff starts to deteriorate, to deteriorate after a while, and you have to keep reapplying it. So, uh, just do yourself a favor. Go to Dick's Sporting Goods. You know, uh, you can pick these shells up. You know, six, eight dollars, and just be done with it. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Plus, you can use it for other things to catch water. Uh, you know, for drinking. Um, Inside of here is my Snug Pack Hygiene Kit. It, it essentially has one big large human chamois uh, that you can use to draw off with. Uh, it's your towel. Um, you know, you could even use it uh, if you were in a situation where you needed some additional water. Uh, maybe you wasn't near a stream, but there was a lot of condensation in the morning. Um, you could use this to gather the condensation off of your tent and use that 
um, to be able to get at least a little bit of water um, for in the morning before you hit the trail. Um, just a handkerchief, use that to wash uh, my face or uh, use it for a cleaning patch for my gun, uh, whatever. Um, so that's pretty much it. The knife that I carry on my bag is the uh, is the Gerber survival knife. Um, it works great. I I've never had any issues with it. I've taken camp. I've taken on uh, several camping uh, trips. Uh, I've started fires with it. Uh, it's got the built-in fire striker. It's got the built-in uh, knife sharpener on the back, knife stone. Um, so, you know, it it works great. If it had failed me, it wouldn't be on this bag. So. Um, all right, so now for the contents. On the very top, always keep a large bag of just uh, snacks that I can eat as I'm on the go. Um, you know, things that are high in protein, high in uh, sugar, things that are just going to basically give me energy. Um, and, and these are really important because you don't want to have to stop and dig through your MRE to see if you can get a little, uh, you know, a small portion of your food item out to keep going. I mean, you can if that's what you have to do, but uh, this makes things a lot easier so that way you can cover more ground. Uh, and again, you know, most of the reason I'm going to be using this and the uh, uh, primary, you know, use for this bag is there's some kind of disaster um, that I need to get to another location. Uh, I like boonie hats. Um, it doesn't matter if it's pouring down the rain, they keep all the rain off your eyes. Um, so uh, I usually always keep one in my bag. And then I've got a North Face uh, beanie. And I can use that in conjunction um, with that in order to uh, keep the sun out of my eyes. Um, you know, and also to keep the heat in. I think it's 85% of all your body's heat escapes through your head. I've got a vacuum sealed uh, toilet paper roll. Uh, without the insert and it's just covered with uh, duct tape on one side so uh, I can use the duct tape for other purposes. I've got one packet of Mountain House uh, which is actually for two people but uh, I promise you by the end of the day after hiking and uh, humping a pack you'll, you'll want to eat the whole thing. Um, I just got a little bit of a, a variety uh, when it comes to the food, I didn't want to carry just all Mountain House or just all MREs. Um, you know, there's a pro, there, the pros and cons. The MREs, um, you know, take about an ounce of water in order to be able to heat and have a hot meal. These, on the other hand, take, uh, you know, anywhere between 12 to 16 ounces of water. So, uh, you know, there's a pro and con with these. Um, fortunately, we do live uh, here in Tennessee. We're surrounded by streams and lakes. Um, you know, water really may not be that big of an issue, but again, it depends on uh, where you're actually going. So um, make sure that if you're going to carry these MREs to break them down, um, that extra packaging that it comes in just takes up space and it's just an extra added weight too. Here I've got the um, Soul Emergency. Um, basically, it's an emergency bivy sack. Um, and what you can do, and I've actually used this. Um, in a cave on the side of a mountain in um, Georgia, actually, but uh, or North North Carolina. But uh, what you can do is that you can put this as an insert inside of your bag, or you can put it on the outside. It's completely up to you how you choose to do that. Um, so this is in conjunction with my 30 degree bag. So um, you know, if I get to the point where I can upgrade the bag, then I'll do so just to have a lower temperature. Ready. Inside this um, dry sack, what I've actually got is a top and a bottom of the ultra lightweight uh, military thermals. Um, it, it's almost like a silk material. And then I also have a, um, a Mountain Hardware long sleeve uh, mid weight uh, thermal so, uh, top. So, uh, you know, a lot of the things that you need to keep in mind is dress and layers. Uh, you're creating by dressing layers, you're creating uh, layers of air in between each layer of clothes, which will help retain heat. Um, also, too, if you get too hot, you can take those layers off so you don't sweat. Um, I'm really big on, I've got one complete change of um, underwear, t-shirt, and socks. And then inside of here is uh, additional socks. 
um, you need to make sure that um, you know as your feet sweat throughout the day if they stay cold it's going to lower your core body temperature um, so it's very crucial especially depending on the temperature you know if you're down in the negative teens and your feet are completely wet then um, if you don't get them dry uh, then there's a possibility you could start to really set yourself up for um, frostbite inside of here I've just got a, a dry pair of pants um, I, I don't really have any other clothes other than uh, these change of clothes here uh, and the clothes that I'll have on on my back of course uh, in the case of the event so um, that pretty much concludes my bag again if you are uh, new at this just make sure that um, that the bag is created specifically for you and your needs in your area um, what may be a, a more likely a case of event of a hurricane in Florida is not really necessarily going to be um, you know something that I'll need to pre prepare for here however we're more likely to get a tornado in this area as per se maybe somebody in Florida so again there's different things that uh, that you need to look at preparing uh, again when it comes to medical make sure the medical kit is designed for you uh, don't have anything in your medical kit that's really above your training um, contact your American Red Cross they can provide a lot of free training for you um, and just search online a lot of the medical supplies that can be bought can either be picked up at gun shows they can be picked up on eBay um, uh, through IFACs that are already established um, you know again if you have any questions or any comments please uh, feel free to let me know and uh, I hope that there was something in this video that you found useful thanks so much guys have a wonderful day hey guys uh, sorry about that I got a little ahead of myself uh, one of the things that uh, I did forget to mention it's probably one of the most um, uh, crucial items of your kit is uh, you know how are you going to sleep at night um, a lot of people you'll see they'll have hammocks or they'll have an app you know just an actual tarp um, you know I'm going to stress um, to you if especially if you're new and actually just looking at building a, a bag for yourself um, invest the money and get a good tent and the reason I am telling you to do that even though that I know how to do uh, primitive shelter building um, you know when you actually take the time to build a primitive shelter you understand how many calories that you end up burning um, that are absolutely crucial to your survival um, so you know in 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 my personal experience and in in the situation that I'm trying to prepare myself for um, I don't want to have to expend those um, expend those calories um, you know think about if you are in the absolute worst snowstorm or the worst or rainstorm uh, you know uh, imagine trying to build yourself a primitive shelter in the middle of the worst storm you've ever been in in your entire life think about that and then think about how much more um, easier it's going to be for you to set up a small tent for yourself and to be able to get out of the elements um, and get dried off um, you know it, it could mean the difference between life and death um, you know for some people so um, again the uh, tent that I forgot to mention was the snowpack um, ionosphere um, I believe it's a little over two pounds it's British military um, they make really good stuff um, it is hefty in price I won't lie however I wanted something that was low profile this is a very low profile um, sleeping system it's made out of no sim material so you don't have to worry about um, you know giving away your um, position with light uh, with you know you're not going to create a light signature like you see a lot in these magazines um, the sleeping pad that's above it is uh, army issue I picked it up at a military store um, <clears throat> I can't stress to you guys um, how crucial it is to have some kind of mat between you and the ground um, if you don't, the ground will rob you of all of your warmth in the middle of the night. And you, if you do wake up, um, if you're one of the lucky ones that do, um, you'll be in a world of you'll be in a world of hurt um, because you'll be freezing to death. Um, and um, I've been there before uh, because my mat that I had failed me uh, and and had a leak in it. And so, um, and it can cause some people to go into hypothermic shock. And just never wake up I mean it's happened to people for so again anyway uh, those are my thoughts again on the tent um, 
you know for me personally I would rather spend the additional money and have that set up for myself uh, versus having to build a, a primitive shelter every night uh, now, if something was to happen and I lost these items, I still do have that knowledge and that ability. So I would advise you to get that training. But again, again, set your kit up for you and for your success. Um, anyway, I hope that you guys found some things that were uh, beneficial and useful to you in this video. Uh, I wish you guys all the very best. And until next time, guys, have a good night.